I want to just do a little bit of metaphysics, and then I'm also going to go into finishing, because this week we're going to finish our 40-day challenge of fasting and feasting that we've been doing. But first, I want to just take the story of Palm Sunday and just do a little bit of metaphysics with it. Most of you are familiar with the story. It comes out of the book of Mark. And I read the children's version this morning before uh, I did my meditation because I always just love to take that. And in the children's version, it talks very simply about there's going to, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We got to have a party. We got to have a party. Somebody get the branches, lay your coats out. He's coming. We got to have a parade. And that truly is what this story is about. But Jesus, who is not someone who lives from his ego, Jesus knows the truth. Jesus knows what's in store. But yet, he's not telling them to not have this fanfare and Hosanna and the palm branches being laid down. He allows them to go ahead and be celebrant, celebrating. But what does he ride in on? He rides on a little goat one donkey that has never been ridden before. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever ridden a horse. I had a horse when I was a kid. And if I didn't ride it every couple of days, getting back on that horse after a week of not being ridden was not pleasant. That horse did not like it. So imagine being on a donkey that's never been ridden before. The pictures, oh, they show Jesus just walking calmly, but I'll bet that was not an easy ride for Jesus. As he enters into the city, knowing that he's got big work to do and it isn't going to be pleasant. I think about that and I think about us. First of all, I want you to know that metaphysically in the Bible, whenever you're hearing a story about and it involves any kind of animals, the animals represent a lower sense consciousness. So, of course, Jesus is riding on top of the donkey because he is not giving any attention to those lowly, fearful thoughts. He's doing what is to do. He's letting the people be who they are because they're excited. But he knows what's in store. So I think about that with what's going on for us right now. And we are entering a city and the journey is not pleasant right now. It's not a party. We're trying to do parties, aren't we? How many of us are on Zoom with our families now? Or we're doing Facebook Live and we can connect four, five, six people all at one time. Uh, we're, it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing how capable and how many gifts we've been in bestowed on the day we were born. This ability to imagine and create, we've taken, I don't know how many of you have grandmas that had no idea how to get on an internet and are connecting with their family on Zoom now because somebody has gone over and taken the time to show them how to get a connection with their family. We are so resourceful as a human race and it's gonna keep showing up people. So I want you to know and recognize and look for the good, look for the helpers. I know I keep saying Mr. Rogers and his mother saying, but it is so true at this time. There are so many helpers. Keep looking for the good. This story, the whole entire Bible, is a story of man's evolution, soul evolution. And we are about to hit the climax part of this evolution, and that is Resurrection Day. But you can't have a resurrection without a crucifixion. And right now we are in and we are on that journey of Calvary. And it's not, it's not a pleasant one. But yet we're making the best of what we can, aren't we? And supporting each other. And still allowing ourselves to laugh and to smile. 
have jokes, kid about the toilet paper. It's okay. We've got to find joy in our heart. It's so imperative. I want you to, um, that's just something I do. I wrote a note so I wouldn't forget this. I want you to hear me how important it is for all of you to continue spiritual practices every day. Now more than ever, that is what gets Unity Truth students through. I visited four of our older congregants this week from the sidewalk. They were on there at their front door. And the wisdom that came out of them, because they get it, they get that there is nothing to fear. And they're not being Pollyannish. They're watching the news. They're staying up to date. They know the amount of cases of coronavirus. They know the death tolls. But they still are knowing the spiritual truth that all is in divine order. And they know the truth. And that truth continues to set them free. How do they do that? Because they have spent many years of regular spiritual practice. Spiritual practice can be like watching Colleen just petting her cat. I see so many of you have dogs or cats in the background. That is a spiritual connection. I feel it with my dog when I lay on the floor with her. That's a prayer. That is my prayer time. That's one of the many prayer times that I have. But meditation is critical. I tell you this often, if nothing else, we all have to go to the bathroom quite a few times a day, don't we? Some more than others. But we do use that time not to take your phone and check your messages. Use that time to just center in. Breathe in the love of God. And when you exhale, see all the faces of God. Because they are all around us now. And they are in every continent on this planet. It is just not the United States or North America. It is all of us. And in our meditations, please include gratitude. And you know who that list is for. But also, I'm going to ask you to include our world leaders. They need prayer. I think about how easy it is just for me as the leader of Unity of Garden Park, basically about 120 people on a Sunday, and how easy it is for me to get hooked into some fear as that leader of a congregation. Can you imagine being a leader of a country or a nation? They need our prayers, all of them. My prayer is that they continue to make good and wise decisions for the whole of our planet. Every night at nine o'clock, there is a prayer vigil that goes on silently through the ethers. That's a spiritual practice. I'm telling you, I now have created a habit that I don't want to miss it. I feel bad if I'm if it's five after nine, but I know etherically, it doesn't matter what time it is. We're connecting and we're shifting the energy of our planet, people. We're shifting the energy. So it's really important to stay in spiritual practice. Remember, when you're in spiritual practice, what are you doing to your vibration? Lowering it? There you go. Raising it. Right. And it's so important because that's how we shift the planet, people. Our planet is energetic. I could go on for another 20 minutes on that. You've heard it. You know it. And it's the truth. So it's so important. There's another spiritual practice going on in the screen. Do you see that little baby Callie? How does that feel when you see her little cute face trying to touch the screen? Oh, 
We have so much to be thankful for, so much. So what did I write down? I wrote something down here. Yeah, this is probably kind of important. We live in a mental world. I mentioned that last week. I will mention, mention it again. You know, the Course in Miracles talks about everything as love or fear. And if it's fear, it is basically a call for love. So in truth, everything is love. Everything. So I'm encouraging you to love fearlessly, love effortlessly. Drop the judgment. And you will find peace throughout this mountain climb. And you'll get to the mountaintop faster when you do that. So as I promised, we're going to get into our last six days of practice for fasting and feasting. And Sandy will be putting these on our Facebook page. So if you're not getting our Facebook post, please friend us and like us on Facebook, and then you'll get those every single day. So tomorrow, Monday, is going to be our next day. And that's, we always start on Monday with a Fasting, okay? Fasting means not doing it, right? Giving it up. So tomorrow we are going to fee fast from overindulgence. You know, um, gosh, this comes from being, uh, being, feeling like you're not enough or you don't have enough. Overindulgence is uh, why some people want to hoard. Overindulgence is also caused from wanting to numb, not wanting to feel this, not wanting to feel the pain or the discomfort. And we all know what happens when we do that. The pain comes back even stronger. And so then we need to overindulge in another numbing object substance so that I don't I can't tolerate that pain. It doesn't serve us for overindulgence. On Tuesday we're going to feast. We're going to feast on self-care. Boy, is that something that we talk a lot about. Fe feasting on self-care. Feasting means we're going to do a lot of it. So that means pay attention to what you need. If you need more rest, then take it. There's no excuse now, is there? No, there's no excuse. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to keep your diet better. Taking care, sleep is so important. And getting out in nature, whatever it is, you all have your own different ways of doing self-care. You know what it is. So I want to encourage you, please do more and more of that, because if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of your family? How are you going to take care of your friends, your neighbors? It's really important. On Wednesday, we're going to fast from scarcity. Okay, scarcity is feeling this is, oh, we see this in the grocery stores, don't we? Yeah. I've yet to find some more Clorox wipes or Lysol spray. Uh, they're just not there, are they? Oh, every now and then you can get some toilet paper, but it's just so funny how once somebody sees something on Facebook or the news, they run to the grocery store and hoard it because they feel that there's not going to be enough. Something else, though, that we feel there's not going to be enough of is love. Some of us go into scarcity mode when we go into worry about, are we ever going to come out of this? Yes, we will. If you trust in divine order, if you have faith of the mustard seed, there is no reason to go into scarcity thinking. We are going to come through this. It doesn't mean there's not going to be pain and suffering. And yes, for some, even death. But we are going to get through this. And we are, my prayer, 
Greg Braden and so many of the spiritual teachers are saying our prayer is that we get through this and that we maintain what we have learned from this. That we don't go back into living the way we used to with not being conscious beings. My prayer is that we take this learning to raise our consciousness and we take it into this next realm of how we are going to live on this planet together as a global species. There is no longer an I, a me, an us, a them. There is only we. There is only we. And we want to take care of the we, don't we? It's a call for love. This whole thing is a call for love. Take that into your heart right now. Everything, everything is a call for love. On Thursday, we're going to feast on abundance. And the quote's going to be from Eckhart Tolle. And I love it. Acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. Acknowledging the good that you already have is the foundation for all abundance. I have a feeling that almost every one of you listening in right now are relating to that. You're finding that you're so thankful for little things that you've taken for granted for eons. And now all of a sudden, you're so grateful for every little bird you hear. I mean, it's the list is endless. And I'm not alone in this. I know I'm not. I know that we are all in this together on that. So feast on that abundance. Feast on it. On Friday, we're going to fast from self-pity. Oh, boy. I hit a wall again. I don't know. Wait a minute. Well, I don't even know. Today's Sunday. So Saturday, it was Friday. Friday, I hit an angry phase. It wasn't sad. I was mad. I was mad at this virus. I was mad at the people I'm talking to. I wasn't mad at them, but I was mad at the virus that's creating their hyper anxiety or their super depression. And I just got angry. And then I realized that was me going into self-pity. And I was also going into self-pity for others. That does not serve us. That does not serve us. You know, Joyce Myers had a quote. Oh, I hope I've got it here somewhere. It is really... Uh, cute what she says about that hang on i'll get it here it's coming she says self-pity is the most miserable party to go to self-pity is the most miserable party to go to because in case you haven't noticed, you're the only one who's in there. Isn't that the truth? I was in it all by myself. Michael wanted no part of it. <laughs> the dog didn't even want to be around me. So self-pity doesn't get us anywhere. So I had to what? Use my spiritual toolbox to get myself out of it. I needed to go to God. I call it God, what source, whatever you want to call it. When you start to drop down in vibration, you know what to do, people. You're unity truth students. You know how to access your 12 powers you've been born with. And you go in deep and you access them, whether it's will or power or the spiritual power of love understanding is huge for me. I always need to keep going to the spiritual power of understanding. That is how I get my vibration back up again. It also is calling people that I know that will 
that are of like mind. Do you find that in this time? To go to like-minded people and call and talk to them. They're going to raise you up and then you're good to go for however long again. And if it's only for five minutes, then pick up the phone again and call somebody again. You, you know, and trust me, if you're looking for somebody's number, call the office and Amanda will get the voicemail and we'll get it to you as long as we have people's permission. And nowadays, I think everybody's giving permission because they want to connect with their family, their spiritual family. Now, here comes Saturday. Saturday is we are going to feast on renewal. What is it? Do not be conformed by what? By this world. But be renewed by what? By be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I'm not going to go into the Easter story at all until next Sunday because we're going to talk about, and Tom's going to be doing Good Friday. And in that, we touch very small at the end about Jesus then goes into the tomb. For many of us right now, it feels like we're in the tomb. But that stone will get rolled away. And we are going to resurrect to a new way of being on this planet. We're going to resurrect to a new Kathy Engelhart is going to renew herself to a new way of thinking. Do not be of the things of this world. They are not your truth. The only thing that is true is the power of love. That is your truth. So circling back to going to the mountain, my prayer is that we all go to the mountain as often as we need to, as often as we need to, go to the mountain and look down at the valley. That's where we're headed. Yeah, we're still in the mountain, on the mountain, but we're getting, we're getting there. And we're getting there together. We're not climbing alone, people. We're in this together. So we're here to heal this world, are we not? That's why you are in unity. Because you get it. You know, Barb Frederick and I all the time, we say this in a kidding voice, but we truly do mean it. We are the Messiah. We all are the Messiahs. Jesus, I'm not being blasphemy here, people. Jesus said it. Of the things I do, you can do an even greater. You are one with the Father. The kingdom of heaven is where? Up there? No. Right here, it is at hand and it is within us. You got it. You got it. And we're going to do it together. And that's what's so powerful about the unity movement. I don't know why every walk of life is not on our websites. We're not asking you to leave your church. We're asking you to just tune in, tap in to the positive love of God. I love you all, and this is unbelievable that we're connecting like this.